Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We are in chapter three talking about machine learning concepts and we'll be stepping into the next segment of this chapter, which is going to cover both the remaining topics of this chapter that is 3.4 factors involved in ML algorithm selection and what's the concept of 3.5 overfitting and underfitting. First of all, to talk about the factors involved in ML algorithm selection, which is the most important thing about how exactly should I go ahead and choose an algorithm for my ML model training and architecture. Of course, uh, we have the workflow with our uh, understanding right now, and we do understand that there are a few things which really, really needs to be understood in the terms of uh, how exactly an ML model algorithm can be decided and can be trained upon. See, again, we do remember that from our previous discussions that an algorithm can be created right from scratch, but as it could be consuming a lot of your time and a lot of trial and error approaches, rather, you can choose a base from the library like available algorithms and based on that you can just groom it up to meet your desired expectations now when it comes to choosing an algorithm from the library available you can use these factors which will influence the selection of the algorithm for your ml model so there is no definitive approach to selecting the optimal ML algorithm. First of all, the ML model settings and ML model hyperparameters. So it's more about that there is nothing specific about it. All you need could be very, very unique. All you need could be very, very specific. And certainly that does not have any criteria to drive it, right? There are no hard and fast rules as such that how exactly one can go ahead and select a set of algorithm, what they need for the ML model does we're trying to tell that again there are no definite approach to go ahead and choose it but still we are trying in practice the set of uh, you know factors which we can actually consider to come to a conclusion still right so in practice this set is chosen based on mix of the following factors that means you can choose some of them which makes more sense or applicability to your uh, AI based system or ML model training and you can go ahead and look forward to decide an algorithm according to that. Number one, the required functionality, which is the most important thing about understanding that what should your ML model be able to do, right? You know, when talk about the algorithm, these are the base architecture or base structure of your ML model, which is going to drive all your functionalities and all your activities, what you want the ML model to drive. So of course the required functionality, uh, whether the functionality is classification or prediction or discrete value, you can choose uh, right from here, the very first factor. The second is the required quality characteristics, such as we have, of course, accuracy, the first one, which means some models may be more accurate, but maybe slower so we need to just understand whether this is something what you are really looking forward to have and the slowness could be fine and adjustable but i want more accurate results so the choice is between uh, the models which are less accurate and fast or more accurate or slow so you can take a uh, decision on that constraints on available memory uh, basically for an embedded system. So what kind of uh, memory is required to have it and smoothly run that process a number of transactions because performance becomes a common criteria everywhere, right? So the available memory will drive your actions faster and also allow you to do multitasking at any point of time. The speed of the training uh, and retraining of the model. Sometimes it really becomes complicated if you have a huge set of data and you have to quite often train the ML model, then it is one of the key criteria which you should take into consideration that how fast an ML model can be trained or retrained in terms of updating the new dynamic information to the ML model. The speed of prediction, which is the response uh, time from an ML model, and the transparency, interpretability, and explainability requirement, which we have already covered. So these could be taken as significant uh, factors which could still uh, help you drive that what exactly is the required algorithm, what you are looking forward to for your ML model. 
Additionally, the type of data available for the training model, sometimes the model might only work with image data. So you need to understand that because of the algorithm, uh, you may not be able to use textual data uh, to train the model. The amount of data available for training and testing the model, like some models might, for example, have a tendency to overfit with a limited amount of data to a greater degree other than than other models, of course. So point is, again, what kind of amount of data uh, is available for training and testing? If you talk about huge data, some algorithms may not adopt that, and they may have some limitations on uh, overfitting the exact amount of data, right? So the number of features in the input data expected to be used by the model, which totally means the number of features uh, in the input data, like you may have different classifications and various classes under each classification. So for example, I'm talking about dogs as one of the classification. And under that, I may have several classes, right? I may have Pomerian, Husky, Bulldog, Rotterweiler, and whatnot. Similarly, I can talk about the other classification that is cat. Now I'm training my model and onto multiple classifications like different set of animals and different breeds under that animal category. So number of features in the input data expected to be used by the model, like such as speed, accuracy, are likely to be directly affected by the number of features. So keeping that into mind will help you drive exactly to what you need. Because sometimes what happens is that we may just look forward to accuracy, uh, speed of response, but may ignore or kind of like forget about that how exactly the amount of data and the number of data and the time taken for training does matter, right? So taking all that factor into account would be very, very useful to come to a conclusion that what is the best algorithm for you? Also adding the expected number of classes for clustering, which is, I think we just discussed about the same, uh, we can further take it to the clustering level, those models may be unsuitable for problems with more than one class. Sometime the uh, algorithm uh, may not accept it, saying that, you know, I, I, I am an algorithm who works only with one particular class and may not talk about dog and cat at the same time. Or even if you try to uh, train the model, it would misclassify the dog and cat breeds, considering that, hey, this is a small dog and this is a big dog, where a small dog is actually your cat. Right. So the previous experience and trial and error, which are certainly uh, other dynamic approaches, which you can go ahead and make use of. Uh, previous experience will guide you with if you have worked on certain other factors before and consider different algorithms, then your experience certainly add values in order to help you what should be the best suited uh, algorithm for your ML model. And trial and error, which is completely dynamic that you don't have any clue what exactly are you looking for. <clears throat> you don't have supporting factors, but you want to just give it a try and see whether which one works for you. So this would be more of like an approach. The last two options would be more of an approach rather than a factor which uh, should be considered in selecting an algorithm. But still helpful if you want to go ahead and use this approach to decide your algorithm could be considered as a factor too. Now that's the reason, as you see, there are so many diverse things which we have to take into account to select an algorithm. And of course, not every single requirement, every single uh, ML model would have all these expectations really identified or set. We said that there is no definite approach to select an algorithm. So it just goes with you what best you have with you. And from that considerations, you can look forward to decide um, what is the right algorithm for your ML model. And if not, you do have the approach like use the past experience or use the trial and error approach. All right, so as we just used a uh, quick word here that uh, we are talking about overfitting and uh, overfitting in the previous slide, and we just wanted to cover that as a part of this tutorial itself, that 3.5 overfitting and underfitting is what they're talking about. So number one, overfitting. Overfitting occurs when the model fits too closely to a set of data points and fall, fails to properly generalize. Such a model works very well with the data used to trade it, but can struggle to provide accurate predictions for new data. Overfitting can occur when the model tries to fit to every data point. Those data points may be described as noise or outliers. 
It can also occur when insufficient data is provided in the training data set. Now, number one thing here is when we're talking to uh, talking about overfitting, it means that it is kind of being trained beyond the limit of the ML model. And that certainly does not talk about uh, accepting something. For example, you're just trying to eat more than your capacity and that may create, <clears throat> I don't want to use that, but kind of like vomiting and it will expect everything out, right? So there's a limit to every certain thing and we try to overfit some time, which is like uh, fitting too closely to all the data points and sometimes it just fails to properly generalize things. So we must not look forward to have overfitting at any point of time, which is giving a very, very diversified set of training data and the, the ML model gets confused that how exactly to differentiate between these uh, two items. Rather, your data should be uh, to the point, very unique in a way that it can be discriminated, it can be differentiated, and the ML model can make precise decisions. So certainly your set of data for the training does matter and you should not be looking forward to do overfitting on an ML model. At the same time, when you talk about underfitting, which is also something to take into account, is it, occur it occurs when the model is not sophisticated enough to accurately fit to the pattern in the training data. Underfitting models tend to be too simplistic and can struggle to provide accurate predictions for both new data and data very similar to training data. One cause of underfitting can be training data set that does not contain features that reflect important relationship between inputs and outputs. It can also occur when the algorithm does not correctly fit the data. So point here made is that when you are providing, as an example, like limited set of training data and the ML model cannot make precise decisions on that. So in this case, probably I just gave you only a few pictures of the dog and uh, of course the reality is there might be 100 different varieties of dogs under different pictures of dog and the, the ml model is only trained with five to ten images of it right and thus the ml model has no capability to identify things because the number of images with which the ml model was trained is very very limited and it does not really understand what are you talking about when you show them the 11th picture or a 12th picture which is not in the training at all. So sometimes what we say in gym general term is overfitting, like crowding things and making it very, very close to each other would be also confusing to ML model and underfitting, which is like kind of starving an ML model uh, with the training data set would also be a problem too. So we should never look forward to have overfitting on an ML model. And at the same time, we should not be starving them with respect to underfitting. So put together, of course, uh, we should have a moderacy uh, in terms of giving that required information to the ML model, which would be able to reproduce the right outputs with respect to the given inputs. So I hope that makes complete sense and gives you a complete understanding of what exactly these concepts are about, that is factors involved in selecting an algorithm and what is overfitting and underfitting. With that, we come to an end, end of the chapter three, and we'll be looking forward to just look at some sample questions in our next tutorials, so stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.